Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the episode 25 about creating a game in HTML5. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to do is to improve the map collision system. So in the last episode, we implemented a basic one where we consider the player as a dot. So it works, but it's not really perfect. We really need to consider the player as an actual rectangle and it will improve the, the collision system quite a lot. So that's what I'm planning to do in this video. Okay, so before getting into that, I want to do a little bit of refactoring. So we got this function called um, bullet update and inside a bullet update, this, this function is a static one, so it's called once and its job is to update every single bullet of the game. So for each of them, it calls a function bullet and then there's this added logic over here. And in theory, if you want to keep the project object oriented, this logic over here should be included in the b update function. I'm just going to copy paste that and place it in the bullet update function. It does not have a bullet. Okay. So if you remember correctly, if we want to expand the update function, we do this. I've covered that in earlier episodes, by the way. And then you redefine this as a function. You call the old update and then you copy paste the, the new so now keep in mind that all I'm doing will not change the um, what will go on with the code it's just that it's gonna make it a little bit cleaner so refactor this now the to remove should be a property of the bullet so I'm gonna add that so by default to remove is false if the timer is greater than 75 to remove becomes true becomes true there we go, and over here. And here, if we update the bullet over here, and if the bullet has the to remove mark, then remove it from the bullet list. Okay, so now let's upgrade the update position function that will take into consideration the map. So right now, this is what we got. We got the enemy logic, which basically we this over here says, hey, the player is to the right side of me, so increase the X by this factor. Otherwise, move to the left, and same goes for up and down. So this is the logic for the monster. So it moves depending on the player. And for the actual player movement, it's basically the exact same code, except that um, we use the is pressing right and is pressing left to determine if he wants to go right or left. Um, and the code is really similar. So what we are going to do is to um, mix the two and create one instead of like defining update position for a player and define update position for the enemy, we are going to uh, move that inside the actor class. So if you remember correctly, an enemy is an actor and a player is an actor. So if you want to share logic between the two, you can simply put them in the actor class and it's gonna solve the problem. Okay, so now one thing to understand is that if we are using um, the attribute pressing right, pressing left inside the actor class, then this means we need to define those attributes inside the actor class. So we're gonna take those and we're gonna put them in the actor class. So everything inside those functions should also be defined over here or defined in the base class, for example. Now keep in mind that by doing this, the player is still gonna have those attributes because the player is an actor. The base class is an actor. But by moving it down here, this means that all the actors will have those properties. This means now the enemy has um, pressing right, pressing left, pressing down, and pressing up attributes. Now one big difference between the player and the monsters are how the, the pressing right and left are um, set. So for the player, they are set by pressing keys but monster obviously don't press keys. So we're gonna have to um, create a function for them. So we already have a function called update aim and we're gonna create a new one that will be called update key press. And how it's gonna work, it's gonna work really similar to the um, update position over here. So depending on where the, um, the difference, if the player is more to the right or left, it's gonna go different size. So this is the code over here, this can actually Die. So there we go. So um, basically what it does is that if the player X is greater than 
the position of the monster, so the player is to the right, you'll want to move to the right. Now, um, in theory, it should be zero over here, so it should be greater than zero, minus zero, greater than zero, etc. But if you put zero, there's a little problem going on. Let's say that the, play, the, the monster move um, four pixel at a time, and let's say that he's two pixel away from the player. So what's gonna happen is the, the monster will move towards the player, because DD will want to move to the right and he's gonna end up at minus 2px in the next frame and then at minus 2px it will say hey I want to go towards the player so it's gonna go back to 2px and then it's gonna go back to minus 2px and what's gonna happen is that the monster will keep shaking so 2px minus 2px plus 2 minus 2 plus 2 minus 2 so by adding this over here so it needs to be greater than 3 and minus 3 this will prevent um, this. So you want to make sure that this value is at least um, the half of the maximum speed of the player. Otherwise, it will keep um, shaking. But in our case, this should be all right. So now that we have this, we are actually going to call it. So right after updating the aiming, there we go. And then what we will want to do is test what we have created. So in theory, what is supposed to happen is that um, the player move exactly like it used to be, and the enemy also moves somewhat like they used to, except that they should no longer shake. So let's go here, refresh the page, and as you can see, I can still move. And the enemies now, I, yeah, I think the logic, yeah, never mind. So everything is working. Now one little problem we have right now is that the monster move as fast as the player, which is relatively an issue. Because right now we are simply doing plus 10, minus 10, plus 10. So 10 is the movement speed. So we don't want it to be always the same for all the monsters. So what we are going to do is that um, max move speed. So by default an actor will have a three maximum move speed and a player will have a maximum speed of 10. So it's gonna be exactly like before. I guess I prefer to define it here. And, okay, update maximum speed. So instead of moving by 10, it's gonna move by the maximum move speed. Okay, so everything is working. Now let's work on improving the collision system. So right now how it works is that we consider the player as a dot. So the dot is inside the middle of the player and that's what we are using to test. So in theory, what you would like to do is to consider um, the collision as a box. So this is what we want to achieve, like a box. And if the box is touching um, the map, then we prevent the movement. However, unfortunately, um, it's very hard to test a box with um, the grid that we have. You cannot really do that. Um, trust me, it's not really convenient. So instead of considering it as a box, what we can do instead is um, put four dots. That's gonna be very easy to do. So we put four dots, one at the top, one at the left, one at the right, and one at the bottom. And whenever you move, we test if those four dots touches a wall. And eventually, if you want to make it a little bit fancy, you could add dots also in the corners. But for now, I'll keep, um, I will only do the logic for four, four box, and it, it should be um, enough for pretty much everything. Like on raining chain, I use the four dot methods, and it's pretty good. Okay, so for the logic itself, this is how it's gonna go. So those are um, bumpers, I'm gonna call them bumpers. So top bumpers, left, down, and right bumper. Um, so how it's gonna go is that if your right bumper, if the right bumper touches a wall, you can go right. It's as easy as this. And same goes for up, down, and left. Now in order to um, know if your right bumper touches a wall, we need to use this function over here. So. Um, is position a wall and then we need to put um, anything that has an X and a Y and it's gonna return F it's correct now if we use this over here this is going to use the center of the player which is not what we want so what we are going to do is we are going to define a bumper right position so it's something we don't really know yet but it's something that has an X 
and a Y. And that's gonna be the right bumper position. And we will call a is the position of wall with the right bumper. It's gonna say if this point over here, which is not necessarily the plier, if it touches a wall. So right bumper touches wall equal this. So in our case, the right bumper is gonna be 40 PX to the, um, to the right. And for the Y, it's gonna be um, in the middle of the plier. So this is approximately 40 PX after like multiplying the size and everything. Right now it's gonna be R coded, but eventually if you want to make a system where the player can change size, you will need to take into consideration that the actual size of the player inside the, the right bumper system. So this will give us if the right bumper touches wall. So in order to move right, so this is the move right, you need to be pressing right and not be touching a wall. And we can simplify that a little bit. We can take this, put it there and remove that part. And for the other bumpers, this is how it's gonna go. We got right bumper, up bumper, down bumper. I'm gonna recall that too. Um, Anyway, those are the bumpers. Like I said, those are R-coded values, but it should be relatively easy to, to fix. And for the code itself, we do, whoops, this, 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 and we use left, right, up, and then. Okay, so let's go and test what we have created. We can actually delete this code, which was part of the old logic and test what we have done. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see, if I try to move down, it's gonna prevent me and it's also gonna prevent me from going over the rock, prevent me from going on the water. So everything is quite good so far. However, there is still one big issue with the system and um, it's this case over here. So we allow the player to be, to do this over that. So what's going on right now is in our logic, how it works is that we prevent moving to the left if the left bumper touches the rock. Um, but like, for example, in our case right now, the left bumper is not touching the rock because the left bumper is approximately where my mouse is. So we allow the player to move to the left and same goes for the right. And um, there are two main ways to fix the problem. One of the way is that if the player moves to the left and one of its bumper touches a wall, we prevent that movement, kind of like what we were doing before. So we move the player if one of the four bumper touches something, movement is not allowed. The only problem with this is that it's not gonna feel, even though it's the, the logic thing to do, it's not gonna feel right for the player. The player will feel like it's um, eating corners all the time and it's gonna feel like the collision is not so good. So instead what um, video games do in general, and that's what I use in, in Rain Machine, is that if you move and one of your bumper touches something, it's gonna move your player up. It's gonna force the movement to the up and it's gonna feel a lot more natural. So basically what we are going to do is that if your down bumper touches something, it's gonna move the player up. And if your left bumper touches something, it's gonna move the player to the right. So that's what we are going to add. Okay, so this is how we are going to do it. So if your right bumper is touching something, then we are going to move yourself to the left by five pixel. Otherwise, so if you are not touching something, then we're gonna check, hey, do you want to move to the right? Yes, move it to the right with the maximum speed. And we're gonna repeat this for all the different um, directions. So it's gonna look something like this over here. So for the left, down, and up bumpers. Okay, so actually this should be minus and this should be plus. So let's just save and test what we have created. So there we go, we can move and we can be blocked by the walls and if we try to do the thing again it's gonna push the player away so that's exactly what we want with the game now there are still a few problems now one of them is that if you try to go somewhere where there's a wall it's gonna shake like crazy and um, there are multiple ways to fix that and I think we have reached a point where we need a better 
X and Y system. So normally in video games, how it works is that we don't directly modify the X position and the Y position. We have something called speed and speed um, allows us to make things a lot more smooth. And normally you have speed and acceleration, so everything is a lot smoother. And this is a, a smooth problem, quote unquote. Obviously, it, it's still possible to do it without a speed attribute, but it's gonna be a lot harder. So what I'm planning to do is in the next episode, I'm gonna cover um, speed and acceleration, and it's gonna make the game a lot more smooth, like I said. So thanks again for watching, and don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode, so see ya.